welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Aircraft such as the C-17 Globemaster III and C-5 Galaxy are some of the largest military transport aircraft in the world. These planes are well-oiled machines that receive almost around-the-clock maintenance and repair. But what happens when one of these behemoths crashes? The SEDAR system manages the recovery and speedy return to action of damaged or immobilized aircraft on the battlefield. This unique work necessitates expert individuals, extensive procedures, and sophisticated equipment. SEDAR teams frequently work under challenging situations. They are critical to maintaining a military air campaign's operating tempo. SEDAR towing operations entail a variety of platforms, each with its own set of advantages and disadvantages. Towing is a mission critical task from the front line to the forward operating base, FOB. One method required is called frontline recovery. During base operations, SEDAR ground support equipment is used at an airbase. Tow tractors, tugs, and bar receiver systems transport damaged aircraft to hangars or repair locations. Then there is external transport, which includes larger assets for hauling aircraft fuselages or major components. Specialized equipment aids recovery efforts in SEDAR operations. Crash bags, also known as lift bags, are extremely important. These 25-ton lifting inflatable equipment are used to elevate the wreckage securely while limiting further harm. Controllable air inlets enable precise, progressive lift, which reduces strain. Cranes, with their high-capacity winches, are critical heavy lifters in SEDAR. These exercises prepare the SEDAR teams for actual aircraft recovery operations, such as the one in Afghanistan. FOB Shank was a key U.S. FOB operating as a critical operational hub in Logar Province, eastern Afghanistan. On January 23, 2012, the 17th Airlift Squadron's C-17 Globemaster III 
encountered a severe landing disaster. But just all working together, cooperatively, safely, to get a necessary job done. That really is, is just been a marvelous thing for me to be involved in, and I thank every soldier, airman, and civilian who's been involved in this for the hard work that they've done and the spirit that they've maintained all the way through this. A realistic training application, such as the one carried out on a UH-1Y Venom, represents extensive hands-on instruction in aircraft recovery. It happens often at Yuma Proving Grounds during Weapons and Tactics Instructor, WTI courses. This intensive seven-week training program provides Marines with critical abilities in various aviation aspects integrated with the Marine Air Ground Task Force. In such a simulation, aspiring marine aviation weapons and tactics instructors strive to save a downed plane by diagnosing, stabilizing, and preparing it for extraction under varied scenarios. It is not only physical labor, it also entails the implementation of established processes safety measures, and logistical planning. A complicated mission was carried out by Marines aboard two CH-53K King Stallions from the Marine Operational Test and Evaluation Squadron. They salvaged a downed Navy MH-60 aircraft in Bishop, California on September 4th and 5th, 2021, creating history as the first official fleet operation using the modern CH-53K King Stallion heavy lift cargo helicopter. Over the course of two days, the CH-53Ks, designed for efficient, long-range heavy lift operations, showed off their increased cargo capabilities and precision in operational situations while performing complex maneuvers to recover the downed bird. This mission not only marked a significant milestone for the CH-53K, but also highlighted the Marine Corps and U.S. military's efforts to improve their global response capabilities. In another example, on July 22, 2015, a powerful instance of inter-branch collaboration happened in the Arabian Gulf, when Navy divers and explosive ordnance disposal technicians carried out a cooperative rescue operation for an F-A-18 Super Hornet that had been lost at sea. The Super Hornet, a twin-engine supersonic multi-role fighter salvage mission, demonstrated the unit's specific capabilities in expeditionary explosive ordnance disposal, mobile salvage diving, and force protection. Unfortunately, aircraft crashes are not uncommon. On September 13, 2014, an extensive search and rescue operation was underway in the Western Pacific Ocean 
as MH-60S Seahawk helicopters worked tirelessly to locate the missing pilot from one of two F-A-18 Hornets that had crashed the day before. In the U.S. Navy, any pilot who must eject from their aircraft has the knowledge and training to provide them the best chance of survival. The Lateral Drift Trainer, LDT, accurately simulates the wind and landing forces experienced during parachute descent and ground landing, as opposed to water landings. Pilots learn how to control their parachutes by aligning themselves with the wind direction and rehearsing roll and tuck landing tactics known as the Parachute Landing Fall, PLF. In an emergency, the pilot can rely on state-of-the-art ejection seats, which are regularly maintained by specialists in the field of egress systems. Ejection seats are essentially safety mechanisms in U.S. military aircraft that provide pilots with an emergency escape route. They're designed to propel occupants out and clear of distressed aircraft at high altitudes and speeds. Components include an explosive charge or rocket motor, harness, canopy destruct, and automatic parachute deployment systems. Ejection seats are meticulously maintained, undergoing detailed inspections every 30 days. Furthermore, their parachutes are repacked and checked by parachute riggers on a regular basis. Safety and functionality are paramount, considering the stakes in the event of an actual ejection. U.S. military pilots, fortunately, have some of the best testing behind them. Andrews Air Force Base became a critical facility for researching pilot ejection procedures using jet-propelled sleds in 1949. These high-speed railed rockets were crucial in mimicking the dynamic forces experienced by a pilot during an ejection. The extreme acceleration and wind blast circumstances of the ejection were reproduced by a specially built sled driven down the track by rocket engines. Ejection seats were actuated at various speeds and locations, first with test dummies and subsequently with brave volunteers. This yielded essential information regarding the optimal ejection method, significantly contributing to the safety devices in use today. From its inception in 1942, the history of crashed, damaged, and disabled aircraft recovery, CDAR, 
highlights the United States military's critical attempts to offset the loss of essential air assets. Regular maintenance of ejection systems demonstrates the efforts made to ensure pilot safety and the preservation of critical military aviation resources. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.